Okay, going, going back to the AI situation, um, like this is quite an important, uh, quite an important debate. Like the, if you assume any rate of advancement in AI, um, we will be left behind by a lot, um, and so then we could be in, like, you know, benign situation. But the, even the benign situation, if you have some, you know, if you have ultra intelligent AI, um, we would be, you know. So, the, so far below them in intelligence that it would be, would be like, you know, a pet. Basically. Pet, that's what I was thinking. Like a pet. Cat, like a cat. Like a cat. Like a cat. Elon it'd be like the a house cat. cat. Yeah, right. it would be like the house cat. Right. Um, and, um, yeah, so that's, it's not the end of the world, you know. It's just, well, no. Sort of pet. You've seen the movie, it could be. Yeah. It could be, it could be. Um, the, you know, so that, but that, honestly, that, that would that'd be the benign scenario. Mm -hmm. um, and so, house cat is okay. I mean, I don't love the idea of being a house cat. Okay. Um, but, but that, so what's the solution? Yeah, so I think the, um, I, I, think, I, think it, I think it's to essentially, I think one of the solutions, the solution that, that seems maybe the best one is to have an AI layer. Um, if you think of like you've got your limbic system, um, your cortex, and then um, a digital layer, a sort of a third layer above the cortex, um, that um, could work work well and symbiotically with with you. I mean, just as your cortex works symbiotically with your limbic system, your di sort of a third digital layer could work symbiotically with the rest. This of is you. something that's. In surgically inserted or bred so, into the species, or what? The, the fundamental limitation is input output. So uh, we, we already have, uh, we, we're already a cyborg. Um, it's just that, I mean, you have a digital version of yourself or, or partial version of yourself online in the form of your emails and your social media and all the things that you do. Um, and, and you have basically superpowers in, in that with your computer and your phone and, and the applications that are there. Um, you have more power than the President of the United States had 20 years ago. So you can answer any question. Uh, you can video conference with anyone um, right. anywhere. You can send a message to millions of people instantly. Um, you know, you just do incredible things. And, um, but the constraint is, is input out output so we're, we're IO bound um, particularly output bound I mean like the your output level is so low it's like particularly on a phone like your two thumbs are sort of tapping away um, this is ridiculously slow um, our input is much better because we have a high bandwidth visual interface to the brain like our, our eyes take in a lot of a lot of data um, so there's many orders of magnitude difference between um, input and output. Um, so mostly, um, effectively merging in a symbiotic way with uh, digital intelligence revolves around eliminating the I.O. constraint. Um, so it's, it'd be some sort of direct cortical interface. Um, and you called it a neural lace? Neur neural lace, yeah. Um, it's totally not Google Glass, right? No, I, I'm talking about something which. No, but it's which, like you wear it. Or you... No, I mean it would be. Uh, I mean, I mean there are a few ways to approach this, but some sort of interface directly with your cortical neurons, particularly. But doesn't that imply uh, surgical insertion? Not or? necessarily. You could go through the veins and arteries because that that provides a, a complete uh, roadway to um, all of your neurons. Your neurons are very heavy users of energy. So they need high blood flow. So you automatically, with your veins and arteries, have um, a road network to your neurons. Still so, some kind of surgery, right? Um, yes, but it, you could insert something, you know, basically you know, in, 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 into the jugular and, and have, <laughs> it gets macabre. But, it sounds I mean, really easy and it, it doesn't involve pop, it doesn't It doesn't involve, you know, like chopping your, your, your skull off or anything like that. That's yeah. good. Yeah. And plus, you're not a house cat anymore, right? Not a house cat. So, right. um, I mean, essentially, if, if we can figure out how to establish a high bandwidth neural interface. With ourselves. With, with your digital self, effectively. Um, 
then, uh, then you're no longer a house cat. You know? All right, on and, that note. No, on that note. And well, well, I, just one closing thing. I mean, I think it's probably are you the benign in, are outcome. You interested, but probably the best outcome, I think. Are you interested in exploring this possibility that you have just laid? So, somebody's got to do it. <laughs> I'm not saying that I will, but I'm, somebody's got to do it. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, so somebody should do it, and I mean, if somebody doesn't do it, then I, then I think I should probably do it. But, uh, and and the goal of this is to prevent there being an external uh, AI, particularly one controlled by a small group of people that could, yeah, be so much more powerful and intelligent than we are that the house it'll be, can. It would be godlike in situation. In yeah. Well, this has been really cheerful. Thank you. Yeah. But, but, if, but if we can establish... I was worried about asteroids at <laughs> the beginning of this. I mean, ast asteroids are a low probability uh, existential threat um, on the time scale that's relevant to us. Okay. Okay. Um, this is different. This requires urgency. So what do you do for fun? Yes, this is much Elon, more Elon, what urgent. do you do for fun, fun? What do you do? Anything? I play video games with my kids. <laughs>